and some of these reasons may surprise you, and I've really been struggling to move to a new headset. Now, in addition to the Valve Index, I own the Vive Pro 2, the HP Reverb G2, the Quest 2, the Vive Cosmos and the Rift S, and I've used them all in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I own headsets with higher resolutions than the Valve Index. In fact, all of my headsets, except for the Rift S, have higher resolutions, but I found the Index gives the best blend between performance and visual clarity. And let's be clear, the Valve Index is a very good looking headset. It does have a small amount of screen door effect, but you have to actively look for it and you soon forget about it once you're flying. What's great about this resolution is that I can maintain a solid 45 frames per second pretty well everywhere in the sim, even over the densely populated Manhattan. Now couple this with Steam's excellent reprojection system, which adds in extra frames to boost the refresh rate back up to 90 frames per second, I get a nice smooth experience in sim. Reprojection is on by default, which is not true of headsets like the Reverb G2, where you have to use a secondary developer's tool interface to enable it. This developer's interface also happens to be very unstable and crashes frequently. Steam's VR reprojection works brilliantly with minimal distortion and Steam VR starts up reliably, which again, I can't say is true of the Windows Mixed Reality system. The field of view is also excellent in the index as the lenses can be moved backwards and forwards. And the field of view is excellent on the vertical, also known as the top and bottom, which means I can look forward out of the cockpit and glance down at my panels without having to move my head. It's always difficult to reproduce what VR looks like in a flat video, but I can see far more at the top and bottom when I'm using the headset than this clip will show. For other headsets, the lenses are spaced further from your eyes, so you can't do this. And for the Vive Pro 2, the lenses are wide on the horizontal, but narrow on the vertical, so you can't see your displays and panels without moving your head. Tracking for the index is the best in the business with Lighthouse base stations, I never see VR drift, which can be a gut-wrenching experience, or any jitters or stutters. It's just smooth, and it doesn't care if you're in low-light conditions, like the Reverb and the Cosmos. The audio solution is top-notch too, with over-ear headphones. The audio quality is excellent, with good directionality. It also means I can hear myself when I'm talking, and makes recording and streaming far easier. Headphone style systems like on the Vive Pro 2 and Cosmos completely muffle my voice. It tends to make me shout and feels quite disorientating. The over ear system also means you could choose to say, have your plane audio come out of your PC speakers and the ATC voices come out of your headsets audio. This helps improve realism and immersion and wouldn't work as well with other headsets. With the exception of the Reverb G2, which has the same excellent audio system. The mic quality of the Index is by far the best of any headset, good enough frankly for recording videos and streaming. Comfort is excellent with a well-balanced headset, excellent adjustability with a ratchet headband, mechanical IPD adjustments which gets the lenses aligned with your eyes, as well as the ability to move the lenses nearer and further to your eyes. It also has the nicest feeling cushioning that I've tried on a headset. It makes use of antimicrobial fabric, which is very comfortable and doesn't irritate my skin. With other headsets, I find I have red marks on my face after a long session. I can wear this headset for many, many hours without discomfort or fatigue. The Vive Cosmos is by far the worst headset for this, as the Halo style band applies significant pressure to your forehead. And I think the last thing to mention is stability. The Steam VR system just works really, really well. It starts up without fail. I can switch backwards and forwards in Microsoft Flight Simulator between a monitor view and VR. I can do this numerous times in a session with no issues at all, whereas other systems start crashing and falling over. Everything installs and works as it should, and I don't have to play around with complicated developer settings like on the Windows Mixed Reality platform. And there is a nice level of fine control and tuning that can be done. I can adjust the render resolution, and most impressively, I can change the refresh rate between four different settings, 80 Hertz, 90 Hertz, 120 and 144 Hertz. 
the 80 Hz setting is great for lower end systems so that you can tune Microsoft Flight Simulator for 40 frames per second and then let Steam VR boost this back up to 80 frames per second with reprojection. So the Rift S is out because frankly the image quality isn't good enough. I find the Quest 2 washes out the image as it's streaming the image to the headset rather than natively displaying it on the screen. The Cosmos is far too uncomfortable and the Vive Pro 2 cuts off too much of the top and bottom. The one headset I do hold out hope for is the Reverb G2. Now I don't routinely use it as frankly Windows Mixed Reality platform is a mess. I can't open the developer settings to tune my resolution and switch on reprojection. It just crashes to desktop every time I try and launch it. I actually went so far as to completely reinstall Windows 11 to try and resolve this and now Unbelievably, I actually can't install the Mixed Reality platform. A quick Google of both of these problems shows that they're fairly common, with the latter occurring with a fresh install of Windows 11. Oh, the irony. However, there are a couple of reasons I plan to persevere with the reverb. Firstly, the clarity in Microsoft Flight Simulator is breathtaking. It is a marked improvement over the index. Secondly, HP now offer a new face mask which brings the lenses closer to your eyes to improve the field of view. And thirdly, those that get it working swear by its reprojection system in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It also has the same antimicrobial fabric as the Index and the same excellent over ear audio system. As I said, the Windows Mixed Reality platform is frankly a mess and this isn't HP's fault. And if I can't get it reliably working, then I'm going back to the index. But the potential reward is good enough to keep persevering. Maybe I'll go back to Windows 10 and I'll definitely upload a video of my experience. I wanted to share this with you as I see lots of YouTubers and reviewers recommending the Reverb G2 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But as someone who flies in the sim daily for many, many hours a week, my experience with this headset to date has been very problematic. Maybe it's because I'm on the AMD platform, but really I shouldn't be having the stability problems that I do. I'm going to try and get this working and I'm gonna do that over the next week. So do keep an eye out for that video. If you're interested in detailed reviews of these headsets, then please check out the playlist on the left-hand side here. Or if you're interested in Microsoft Flight Simulator VR performance, check out the video on the right-hand side. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are, stay safe in the skies, and I will see you in my next one.